All right, hey. Uh, all right, here's what we're gonna talk about today. I decided that in addition to leaving reviews on stuff that I'm listening to it in real in real time, I'm just gonna grab a bunch of uh, albums that I used to love or that I do love and just talk about them and just just be positive, just like geek out about the stuff that I really really enjoy. It's better to talk about stuff you love than to criticize stuff you hate, right? So here's the album we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> Uh, Under Lock and Key by Dokken. I got a lot of uh, hard rock fans, and they'll know what this is. They'll know how, how great this album is. They'll know how important this record was to this band. I'm just going to tell my slant on it, how this came to be for me. Um, if you don't know it, it's like it's 80s rock. It's straight-up 80s rock. I mean, uh, Dokken's biggest song was probably In My Dreams, I would guess, right? Or Dream Warriors, maybe, mm, depending, uh, which is on this record. So In My Dreams... I saw just the way it's supposed to, the way the marketing department wanted it to work. I saw In My Dreams on MTV and I kept singing the song and I was like, I got to get that song. I was like, I don't even know how old it was, 11, I don't know, 10. I have no idea, but I was like, I need that song. So I was at the point in my life when I was buying uh, tapes, cassette tapes. I didn't, there were no CDs yet. And I remember getting this cassette tape. I was dying for it. We got it at a Kmart, I think. My mother bought it for me. Supportive parents. Nothing is more important, really, because um, we couldn't afford that. You know, tapes were turned out, whatever. Hold on, this stop it. Anyway, I couldn't stop uh, hearing the song. And of course, this is before the internet, before anything. I just had to buy the record to hear the song again. Didn't know anything about Dokken. Knew nothing. I knew the one song. I begged my parents. I didn't have to beg. I asked my uh, parents to give me the tape. They got me the tape. And I got it. And it, it's, it's uh, you know, tapes had two sides. Um, in My Dreams was track three on the first side. And I remember I went home and I just fast forwarded the record to track three so I could just hear that, hear it. This album, in fact, I listened to In My Dreams so much on the tape. I don't know how this happened to this day. I don't know how it happened, but I'm sure there's a thing for it. I re rewind it and I put the counter, you remember a counter, like the mileage thing on your car where you hit reset on zero? I put zero at the beginning of In My Dreams so it would play through so I could rewind it, stop it at zero, listen to the song again. I listened to that song on that tape so many times that somehow, I don't understand, the audio ghosted on the tape. And I could hear the intro, in my dreams, right before it actually kicked in on the tape. Like, it wasn't like that on the recording, because I've looked on the CD. Maybe that, I thought maybe I was crazy. I listened to that tape so much, somehow it did that, I think, right? That's my recollection anyway. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, love this album. I listened to it over and over and over again, because again, you have only so much access to music at that time. Um, but love it. I liked everything else on here. I really dug Lightning Strikes again until the living end. Like anything with a double kick at that at age, I was like, I'm sold. I'm a, I remember uh, the end of uh, Till the Living End where there's, uh, there's the, the, the guitar cable and it's like, eh, eh, eh. I was like, oh, sounds like dad because that's how it sounds in the studio in the basement. A um, couple other quick thoughts. These are just my personal things. It took me so long. I don't know how long I had this record before I figured out that this thing in the middle was Dokken. It said Dokken on it. It was a Dokken logo. Didn't know that. Had no idea. Um, I like every song on here and it's well paced. You know, there's like a, a Unchained the Night is like a big epic song to start with and it just runs through the gamut. The single's number three, Slipping Away, Ballad number four, and then we go Lightning Strikes again. And it's just play everything on here is good. I never was a huge fan of Jaded Heart, which I know is weird because everybody loves Jaded Heart. But um, yeah. That's all I got, other than I just listened to this record so many times when I was a kid. I know this is very... Oh, I do have a little a little side note. Um, Lightness Strikes Again. Okay. Follow me on this. Uh, in art school, in uh, art school, in art class in high school, everybody was allowed to bring in music to play on the tape player um, in the corner of the room. And everybody got their turn. Like Monday, we all sign up. And when your day rolled around, you brought in the music for the hour. And I made a tape. I made a mixtape for art class. And I was very excited. And I put in all my favorite songs. And I'm like, again, 12, 13, I don't know. And I put on my favorite songs. And even then, I liked stuff that was not popular, not on the radio, had never been on the radio, you know, stuff like that. So I had a tape made of great. And I thought, I'm going to turn everybody on to all this stuff. And they're going to be like, oh, my, I'm still trying to do that. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, what's this? Um, so I remember putting the tape in and playing it. And this is a lesson that I've always carried with me. And as soon as it started, like the soon as it started playing, I'm sitting drawing or whatever I was doing, and the whole class hears the music, I'm going, oh, this was a mistake. 
I'm too young to just go, hey, you know what, everybody? I'm sorry. I'm screwed up and take it out. And I just let the tape play. And I don't remember all the songs that were on it, but I do remember Lightning Strikes Again. Because at the end of Lightning Strikes Again, Don Dockin goes, Lightning! Like over and over again. Light! And I'm just sitting there like embarrassed. Just like the whole class of these people that are cool. And it's like 80, it's, this, this, was, this was not cool at the time. Maybe it was the early 90s. I don't know. But I remember one of the guys, I forgot his name, started making fun of it. Like, Lightning! And I'm like, and in that moment, I, from that till now, I remember thinking, whenever I'm bringing music to people, just make it stuff that everybody loves. And maybe slip in one or two songs that you love. But basically, play it very, very safe whenever I'm in charge of music for a room full of people. And that is what that taught me because it was just like, it was probably like 12 songs just like Docking because at the time, that's all I really had listened to. So it was probably Docking, Winger, it was probably all that kind of stuff. And I just remember that about that. So, is that interesting? No, not really. Um, great, by the way, if you don't know this and you're a fan of the 80s stuff, well, if you're a fan of the 80s stuff, you should know this, but great guitar work, great vocals, great hooks, great songwriting. Uh, Michael Wagner, I always say Michael Wagner. Is it Michael Wagner produces? this? Um, it's just really, really good. This is one of the, one of the, like one, like the epitome of this kind of hard rock time, uh, hard rock time, hard rock music at the time. Um, so if you don't have it, any like eighties, you should get it. But I imagine everybody who knows who Dokken is has this one. This is their biggest record, right? I think so. There, it's not their, my personal opinion, my favorite, my favorite Dokken record is that one. Is that weird? Does that make me strange? But we won't talk about that. Um, Okay. Those are my thoughts on Under Lock and Key by Dockin, and I can't believe I talked about this for seven minutes. Oh, my God. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, if there's anything you want to hear, let me know. I'll talk about it and subscribe to the channel. And if you know who Dockin is, share this with friends who also know who Dockin is, and you can agree or disagree with me. That's fine. I like to talk about music. It's fine. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.